Hello and welcome to the storm forecast for Zol'jin. So, this is the second episode of forecast, so we're going to go ahead and try to jump into this really quick. I'm going to give a brief overview of each of these abilities without actually reading into them. Me, then I'm going to jump into the game and start showing you what these abilities do at their personal peaks. So we have the trait, Berserker. Do more damage when you activate it. The more hurt you are, the faster you go. Grievous Throw. You hit somebody, they take more damage. It's a nice line throw, decent cooldown. Twin Cleave. Holy shit, this skill is awkward. Um, the coding's hey, weird, the not? arc is weird, the way it works is weird. I can't wait to get more spells like it. You'll see how this works in the game. Regeneration, a simple spell. Take a couple of seconds out, heal 25% of your health, keep on moving. Taz Dingo, you can't die. You can take damage, but you can't die. And Guillotine, and we make you drop a giant play. axe, the more hurt you are, the more hurt they are. That was simple enough. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so to start off, we're going to go ahead and use his passive. His passive, as you can see, activate to do 25% bonus damage while you're consuming your health, and as you move faster, or as you lose health, you attack faster. We've upgraded this a couple of times, so you can now go up to 140% instead of 100%, and uh, when you're below 50%, you gain an additional bonus 25% attack. So we're going to go ahead and drop up the numbers. Activate and attack. As you can see, we're losing health. This health is lost at a percentage base, so you don't actually have to worry so much at lower levels. It's not like you're losing 10 health per attack. The problem with that is, is it doesn't get any better as you level up. So at end game, you're losing the same rough amount of health as you are early game. So as you can see. Attack fast, do lots of damage. This character thrives in a basic attack environment. And down here, you want axe. Let's go ahead and pull that one up. You want axe. Every five attacks, you gain 1.5 damage. Once you've hit uh, 120 attacks, which is 24, we just hit it right there, you gain bonus 20% range. So now. Every time I hit 5, I gain a little bit of damage, and this will stack forever. For example, we're at 34, and now we're at 190. Well, almost at 190. So as you can see, we also have Let the Killing Begin. And we're dealing about a thousand points of damage per attack. We're attacking a little more than 3 times per second. And when we stack that with our Grievous Throw, we're getting pretty high. You're probably never going to get into the 200 rank stacking range, but at 1.5 damage per stack, even 30 points is killing. Continuing on with the not-so-normal spells, we're going to show you the final spell, a level 20 variant, Ensnare. Simple enough, you aim, you throw, it's a net. Roots the first enemy hit for two seconds. Very simple, very elegant, 60 second cooldown. Next, we have Grievous Throw. Grievous Throw is a simple lined ability that marks your target. This variation increases the damage from 50 to 65 percent allows the mark to travel not just through two targets but through as many as you can hit with it and when you hit a target that has been marked it lowers the cooldown also when you hit a target that's been marked it increases your movement speed so simple enough throw hit throw hit now, next we have the Twin Cleave. With Twin Cleave, there is a sliding spell here. You have Swirling Death and Laceration. First, we will show you Swirling Death. To preference, we have started 
with a lowered cooldown for every enemy hero hit, and um, when being hit by both at the same time, they take bonus damage. Now, do note that being hit by both at the same time... Stop attacking what doing that. You have to hit at that center point. It does, however, kind of show you where that center point is. Now, to remove that, and we'll demonstrate here. Do note that the cooldown does get reduced by each blade hitting the dummy. So, with this configuration, we have four hits on each dummy. So, if we had multiple heroes, we could get reasonably a pretty decent amount of cooldown uh, reduction here. Continuing, now the difference is we have taken the slow. So each blade now slows by 15% additional. So that's 30% in total per blade up to 60% combined. Now do note that on the four times, if you hit a target with all four blades, they will also receive a 60% bonus, making this the definitively weaker version as Swirling Death potentially doubles the damage with the same possible slow. Um, this spell is awkward to use, to demonstrate it in lane a little bit. While moving, if you move away, the blades will go back to where they were. So, if you are, say, running from a fight, you could throw it behind you in an attempt to grab somebody with the slow. Hitting them with both of the slows, either on the return, or possibly even hitting them with the slows on the throw and then on the return, could potentially save your life, slowing them just enough for you to get away. Uh, however, the angle of the throw makes it extremely hard to aim. Um, while it is very strong as a spell, and has a lot of potential, especially as they expand the number of missiles that use this logic, it'll take some getting used to. So, have fun with that. For the next spell, we have Regeneration. Regeneration is a very simple spell. You click it and you regenerate. By default, you cannot move or perform any actions while doing it. However, when increased with uh, forest medicine, regeneration no longer is channeled and allows you to move and make other actions. Taking damage will break regeneration. Um, I've also increased the amount of regeneration with Troll's Blood and with the passive from Arcanine Axis, below 50%, the ability power of all of my abilities is increased by 50%. So, as you can see, I'll go ahead and stop attacking for a second and just heal. A pretty decent amount of health. It does, however, have a 15 second cooldown, so do be careful about that. All in all, very simple. You heal yourself, and you're done. It's a click and forget spell. Well, if you upgrade it. If you choose not to upgrade it, you have to hide in a bush and click. But it only lasts for about four seconds, and that's often enough to keep you alive in the middle of a fight, or to heal yourself up after a push. Next, we have Guillotine. Guillotine's been upgraded with its Storm ability, Buzzsaw, which allows it to roll, dealing damage after rolling. Guillotine increases its damage as you lose health. So as you can see here, Guillotine will currently do 3,270-ish damage. So if we go ahead and drop that here. Now do remember I am getting that bonus 25% ability power. So, if I move over here, however, one fun thing, we can actually hit this building, and it rolls with enough force, 
or with enough power in the uh, roll to do additional damage if you hit the target early enough. So, if we were to drop this, say, here-ish. Well, that was a pretty bad drop. But, as you can see, the, the point remains. Drop, do tons of damage, and walk off. Next, we have Tazdingo. Four seconds of unkillable. One sad thing about the spell is since Berserker can't kill you, there is no want to rush this so you can get the maximum damage potential out of Berserker without killing yourself. However, once upgraded with the Storm ability, Amani Resilience, you now kill for 50% of the damage dealt during Tazdingo. So, how we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead and activate Tazdingo. As you can see, with just 40-ish, we were able to heal up almost completely with a single Tazdingo. Now, do remember that when you use this ability at low health, you gain health, which slows down your attacks, so if you use this in a fight, it's going to screw you. But if worked, used, if used well and timed with regeneration, especially if you have taken the uh, forest medicine, you can heal oh, almost good. completely throughout a fight. Uh, do note that the healing from Tazdingo doesn't, or Tazdingo, doesn't actually affect you until after you uh, are finished with it. Deeds shall be remembered. Finally, we have Voodoo Shuffle. Uh, Voodoo Shuffle is a activated ability that you take right after your uh, final abilities. Simple enough, you kind of shine with the light and you break roots and slows. Um, I, yeah, simple enough, you break a root, you break a slow, you click, you run away. Soldier Nothing else. Forward. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this forecast. If you have any questions or uh, comments about any of the spells that you've seen here, or if you'd like a more in-depth analysis going over every talent and ability within Zuljin's kit, have a look at my Storm Talk, where we go in-depth with Zuljin's character. Have a nice day.